This is the new Lumix GH7. Panasonic have really packed in the features here with some very welcome and attention grabbing headline features like internal ProRes RAW recording, the phase detect autofocus system from the S5 Mark II, and for the first time in any camera ever, 32 bit float audio recording. So let's dive right in to those three big headline new features. The first big surprise here is ProRes RAW recording internally. The GH6 was already able to record regular ProRes, but the GH7 takes that to another level and lets you record 5.7K ProRes RAW, which is very impressive for such a small little camera. Now, this is ProRes RAW, which is a very efficient and codec, great to play back codec, but it does come with the annoying caveat of not being able to work in DaVinci Resolve. I'm sure most of you already know this. It's been a point of frustration for the whole industry for many years now, but it is still worth mentioning as it's really annoying. ProRes RAW works beautifully now in Final Cut, in Premiere Pro, even in Avid, but not in Resolve, which is the one that you most likely want to be using to grade if you're choosing a RAW workflow. Why? Who knows? But that's not Panasonic's fault, and having a RAW codec internally on a camera like this really is fantastic. And it's also worth mentioning that the HDMI port can still send a RAW signal out. So you can also choose to record your ProRes RAW externally on an Atomos or Blackmagic RAW to a video assist if you prefer. The next big surprise feature is that this is the world's first camera which will record audio in 32-bit float. This is fantastic news. If you've never used 32-bit float before, it is a huge upgrade. You can essentially think of it as raw video but for audio. In fact, that's kind of doing it a disservice as you can raise and lower the audio a huge amount with no noticeable drop in quality at all. You can't do that with video. Essentially, you'll never have to worry about setting your audio levels in camera ever again. It really does make that much of a difference. It is a massive difference when you're working. Now, with the GH7, you do need this optional new XLR unit in order to enable this. Once it's connected, it unlocks this sound record quality option in the menu, which lets you choose 32-bit float in either 48 kilohertz or 96 kilohertz which is actually a step above the average 32-bit float product on the market already. But perhaps the biggest improvement over other 32-bit float options is that this is recorded in camera into the video file. No more separate audio files and resyncing in post. When I first picked it up to try it, I was expecting it to be recorded as a separate file on the card. But no, it's all in the same video file. This is a huge time saver. I love this feature. Having 32-bit float audio in camera makes so much sense. We've seen it in audio recorders for a while now. Recently, it's been coming to wireless systems as well, like the Rode Wireless Pro, but having it in camera so that you can use it with any microphone system you might want to be using and you don't have to offload and resync from a different device, it just makes so much sense. This is a feature I want to see come to every single camera on the market. The next big feature was much more expected. Just like on their full frame cameras, they finally added phase detect autofocus. And it's really good. It's just as good as Canon and Sony systems. I won't spend too much time in this video talking about it because it's the same as on their other recent cameras, but I don't want people to think that we're glossing over it because it's not important. This is hugely important and it's going to make a massive difference to the people considering this camera. Customers have been asking Panasonic for an improved autofocus system for years, and now we finally have it on the GH cameras. So that's the three big new features. So let's now look at the rest of the camera. The sensor is a 5.7K, 25.2 megapixel, backside illuminated, micro four thirds chip, with a claimed 13 plus stops of dynamic range. Gone is the dynamic range boost mode for the GH6, which added an extra layer of complication for users. I don't have a GH6 here to compare this to, unfortunately, as I'm very curious to see how this camera's dynamic range compares to the GH6 with dynamic range boost on. So let us know in the comments if that's something we should be interested in us making for you to see. 
But apart from that, the resolutions and frame rates, they're quite similar to the G86. 5.7K in up to 60p, 4K up to 100p, and 1080p up to 300 frames a second. Plus, we have the same industry-leading, fantastic image stabilization system that we're used to from the GH cameras. And physically, this is essentially the same camera as the GH6. You know, there's no real surprises here. The grip is very comfortable, the EVF is very good, the screen articulates and tilts away from the body, and the controls are the same. It also has the same dual card slots, one CF Express Type B and one SD card, plus the full-size HDMI port, which Panasonic have always been good at making sure is there. If you're used to GH cameras, this will feel exactly the same to use. The new XLR Unit 2 is a bit different though. It's longer and squarer with controls for three inputs on it now. The third one being a 3.5 millimeter mic input. There's then a new switch on the side which lets you choose which inputs get sent to the camera. Apart from that though, this will also feel very familiar to people. So overall, the design is a bit of a if it ain't broke, don't fix it situation. Could it do with modernizing? Yeah, maybe. It doesn't feel like a small camera really, especially considering its smaller sensor size. But it is a very feature packed camera and it's a very comfortable and practical camera to use, even if it's not the smallest. So the GH7 is in many ways, the same camera as the GH6, but with these three big headline new features added, phase detect autofocus for the first time in the GH lineup, internal ProRes RAW recording, and for me, the biggest one, internal 32-bit float audio. Panasonic have never been one to just follow what the other camera companies are doing, and it really shows here. The GH7 is a fantastic camera, and so if you're in the market for a Micro Four Thirds camera for video work, this is easily the best choice out there. But whether or not you want to actually own this camera, I do think it's one to pay some attention to, as these new features, well, they could very well be about to shake up the industry a little bit. But let us know what you think of the GH7. Which of these new headline features would make the biggest difference to you and to your work? Let us know in the comments. And if you want to order a GH7 for yourself, then head over to provi.co.uk. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.